How's it going, folks? Welcome back to another episode of Fishing in Paradise. Today, we're going to be talking about the best cutthroat trout flies for mid to late summer. But first things first, thank you so much to Keep It Real Fishing for sponsoring today's video. If you guys don't know what Keep It Real Fishing is, they're an apparel company that makes really nice hats that I love to wear. Really cool. I love the colors and the designs on them. Nice and cool hats. Um, you can get them at keepitrealfishing.com. And if you use promo code CH10, you can get 10% off. And they're really nice hats. I love the designs on them. They're a really cool fishing hat. They don't just make hats. They make performance sweatshirts. They make performance everything. Nice t-shirts. And if you use promo code CH10 at checkout, you will get 10% off and free to call, which is a pretty good deal. But without further ado, now let's think about the best cutthroat trout flies for mid to late summer. So first things first, I have Hayden on the other side of the screen, if you guys haven't noticed. She's the other member, you guys have seen her in a few videos. So first things first, we're gonna be talking about stimulators. Here are a few different stimulators I have in my fly box. I love throwing stimulators. I have tons of them, as you guys will see in some of my fly boxes. I have tons of stimulators. I love throwing them. This is a very large stimulator. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Here's a size right here. This is a more of a curved stimulator. This one's a little less. Um, the video you saw the other day, I was actually throwing this exact stimulator, this exact one right here. That's why the tail's bit off. But this isn't what I call my personal best cutthroat on. That was on a humpy that my dad ties, which I don't have any of them. But that's not the purpose of today's video. This will catch you a lot of numbers. It catches decent sized cutthroats. You saw some of the cutthroats I was pulling out. I was pulling out some decent sized cutthroats out of there. Very fun and very nice. So this is a very large streamer. This works really well in pretty fast water where you have a hard time seeing your fly. Stimulators are great to throw for beginners. They float well, they, and they um, are very easy to see. So, Hayden, do you want to start talking about some of your mayflies? Because, oh, well, before that, sorry, Hayden. When you want to throw the stimulators, at least for me, is going to be evening when it's sunny out. They're a great fly to throw in the evening when the fish are active and you see fish busting. One of the things I love doing with stimulators is this, you will catch a lot of fish, and you saw that in my last video, where I see one rise, and I can cast right on top of it, and on the first or second cast, I will catch that exact fish, because they're fired up, they're getting ready to go, and then when they see that fly, they just, out of reaction, because they just ate, they think, yeah, that's a fly, so they eat it without really looking at it. So that's a great way to fish it, because these bigger stimulators, I don't know if you guys really noticed, but... They don't have as good of a profile as like a humpy or a royal wolf or caddis. They're kind of, they're a little more hook-like, which makes it a little harder to catch bigger fish on them. Which my personal most cutthroat, as I said, was not caught on a stimulator. But a great way to throw them is fast water, green kind of water is a great place to throw it. And you see the water's kind of like a greenish tint, they not show. blue, green. They're mayfly pattern and, that I, um, um that's a great place to throw it as far as the uh, rivers. Like the thigh and is yeah, this one? Evening's I'm not great. sure if you can just really see. Faster water but they have right these when a fish two rises, tails, right which just right, right, uh, okay. distinguish them from like other So do other you want to talk about some bugs. of your uh, mayflies? So, when I fish great. this is late uh, summer and um, all of fall. And I fish it when there are um, like the hatches of them. So, if you catch a bug and it looks similar to this, it is most likely a um, mayfly. Mayflies, um, just a little thing to add on, mayflies are great to throw pretty much all day long. <laughs> okay, so another pattern of fly that works great mid to late summer is a caddis. Now, they're one of my favorite um, flies to throw, probably as well as Hayden, but um, I have many different variations in my tackle box, uh, not my tackle box, my fly box. 
um, I there there's I just use a lot of them like I'm just gonna get out a few different patterns here and some of the different sizes that we have so here are just a few of my caddis so there's elk hair caddis there's many different kinds of caddis this is one of my favorite caddis to throw in the evening because it is a very large profile it's easy to see it floats well just like stimulator um and it really resembles a cat and it really resembles a caddis really well if you guys look at the underbelly of that thing orange shows up really well they make them in a few different colors. This is a very fancy one that I got here. It's also can imitate a mayfly. Um, this is another um, caddis here, but as I said, it also imitates can imitate a mayfly and also imitate a hopper. It imitates a lot of different things, but this is a great fly to throw uh, mid, um, not midday, evening, because it it's very realistic. It's large. This is another variation, color variation, a darker bottom. And then the, the caddis don't always look like this and have the wad of um, deer hair or elk hair on the top. They also come in, in sizes and shapes like this one right here. These are the small version of caddis. Um, um, I love throwing these smaller ones during midday. They work really well midday. Um, um, I also love I'm gonna throwing this one. Um, this, this is an thing. elk hair caddis, so Connor During, mentioned um, it. And this is high mountain that, lakes, um, they were great, but I love probably one this of just deep the um, really great fly, dry flies Small, that I throw uh, profile, the most. They don't really think much of it. Because I, I went on so, a backpacking trip yeah. a little bit ago. Uh, we met, went to this high mountain lake and to catch cutthroat and great lean. And this is what I caught um, most of my fish on. So this is a great uh, fly to use if there is a caddis hatch. great fly that's for sure so yeah that so that's the caddis part great to throw caddis work very well morning these larger caddis work very well in the morning and evening not so much midday midday it switched to smaller flies which we are going to talk about right now. okay so we just had the little segment about mayflies um not and um caddis now we're going to talk about best kind of midday flies, which you can go hoppers, chubbies, um, royal wolves. So we'll start off by I'll start off by talking about a royal wolf. So a royal wolf is a great fly for midday, very small dry fly. Um, oh, and if you guys are wondering, all of these flies that we're talking about, we're actually not talking about nymphs. We are just talking about dry flies, guys. I love throwing dry flies, and I think Hayden does too. Yeah. So this is a royal wolf. They're a great fly to throw midday. They have this nice red color on the bottom. They imitate smaller flies that you'll see hatching midday, flying around, all that. Um, yeah, so as I said, they imitate a small um, fly. They have this white tuft up here, which makes them very easy to see yeah. in the water because they sit kind of so, low. So, um, hoppers can come in, like, to throw um, many different, like, And now, I think we'll start by techniques. talking about some hoppers, so, right, Hey, Some of them look like this and are kind of, like, you can use them for, like, uh, different ones. Some of them, like, the chubbies, which can imitate different, um, types of, like, stone flies, but they can also imitate hoppers. And look like that and I don't have them on me but some are made to look like like super realistic chubby which doesn't really matter I have a all chubby that right much here because um, anything that looks similar to um, a hopper uh, the fish will most likely take because they're not all that picky
They and as I said, they work great midday when those grasshoppers are moving around. Here's one. This is a very great fly to throw in fast water. And also, as Hayden mentioned, since this one floats very well, and also as Hayden mentioned, um, there's many different techniques where you can use them. You can throw them out there and just let them drift down. Or you can fish them and you can give them some movement, which is always fun, depending on what hopper you have. If I'm throwing a hopper, like this one right here, I can move it across the top of the water like this, and it makes this little kicking motion. And that big cutthroat will come up and just engulf it. And same with bass. These can work pretty well from bass, but that's not the purpose of today's video. But yeah, so hoppers work great middays when those uh, fish I don't are moving have around more, and doing but... stuff. There is this one, I don't right, have it on me, but I've seen it different in different um, sizes of hoppers. Stores. It's called the Dave's Shapes Hopper. Um, I don't look have it online. Anymore, um, but there is this one, it, I don't have it it's on me, but really, I've seen it in, um, uh, It looks stores. very similar to it's called the, the natural grasshopper. Um, so I haven't actually fished I'll pop up an image right now. I think it would work very well. it a few times i've caught some pretty big cutthroat on it so it's an amazing fly this is now we should probably start by talking about some um, beetles and ants and other can, really cool midday I, flies i like only have got, these right? kinds of my fly box at the moment they can look um different so there it's just um if you look at like the chubby and stuff they have this big foam thing and that helps it float so you got like that um, shell right here in the head and sometimes uh i like to put the like a either a green or an orange little um i don't know what would you call it um just like yeah foam um on the top right there um foam and some have like a peacock underbelly like the one I'm showing yeah. you guys right now. Yeah. Um, this is actually one that I tied. These are a very simple fly to tie. You do need some thicker string, but it's a very simple fly to tie. Very fun. We may do a tutorial on that. Along with beetles, you do have these little ant flies. I'm not sure if Hayden has any on them. On her. But um, here's one that I have right here. Very realistic. And just like the royal wolf has this white top. Very easy to see in faster water. Great fly to throw midday when those ants are out and moving around. I don't have any more. Oh. Um, do you have any more flies to mention? I guess eggs? I do have one kind of similar to a chubby. It's very small. Um, this is one I uh, made up myself, so you can't really find it in stores. Um, I call it the root beer float. Cause, um, so, so yeah. Like yeah, so... Just kind of, it's a smaller version of a chubby. Um, I have caught a good amount of fish on it, so that would work too. Maybe like if we get enough likes on the video, we will do a tutorial of how to tie it. Maybe. Depending on, we may do a giveaway, and make sure you stay tuned to the end because I'll announce the giveaway winner because I saw them commenting. I guess they didn't really realize it, so I'll announce you at the end of the video. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the gear that you want to throw this on as far as tippet, um, fly line. Well, you guys can just use whatever's on your reel. That's not very specific. But I use 5X 9-foot um, scientific anglers tapered leader. Nine foot opposed to seven foot to get it far away from the float line. Um, it's just a great, it's, I, so the seven foot is five cents less. So I'd go nine foot because one, it's, it's not much more. And two, it gets farther away. And they're not going to see the float line, which is really good. And then, so the tip that I like to throw on this is 5X. Um, scientific anglers fresh water tippet um, it's a great tippet I love it At, if I'm throwing this in your if I'm throwing a nine foot I'll tie only like a foot of tippet because it's a nine foot leader um, but that's what I'll throw as far as my tippet and this 
And then we run into this problem all the time when you fly fish, the fly starts sinking. The solution to this is gink. Get some gink, um, we'll link them down below. It's a great way to float your fly. You just squeeze it on there and your flies will just float. It's a nice way to keep your flies floating so you don't have to dry them out as much. Just an overall very helpful fly. There's also two types of um, gink. There's also, powder. There's also two types of um, gink. There yep, is like the powder the right here. Um, and then the liquid. like liquid, which Connor has, I believe. But yeah, it's a great fly dressing. Love it. <laughs> so now we will announce the, give the giveaway winners from a few videos ago. I already replied on the comment. They, I don't know if they see it. But it is AM, I believe. I'll pop your comment up right here when you comment to done. Thank you so much for being subscribed. Check the, um, the comment I replied to you on, on the cold and clear water bass fishing tips part one. Reply to your comment. Uh, give, shoot me an email and I will get those flies shipped to you. So, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Fishing in Paradise. Hope you guys enjoyed. And make sure you guys use promo code CH10 to get 10% off Keep It Real Fishing Hats. Now thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.